Hey, I'm Ben, Ben Avery, and this is Strangers and Aliens. Strangers and Aliens is an audio podcast and a video series about science fiction and fantasy, and faith and Christianity. And if you go over to strangersandaliens.com, you'll find hundreds of episodes of me, my co-host, talking about science fiction, movies, books, comics, all sorts of pop culture things. And we are also Christians. We love the pop culture stuff and we love Jesus. And we love talking about how sometimes the pop culture stuff gets us thinking about Jesus and the Bible. And that's what the podcast is about. Here on this video feed, we have been exploring questions about Christian science fiction books. And it all comes from rereading C.S. Lewis's Space Trilogy for the podcast. And it got me thinking about a lot of different things, but it also got me wondering, is there more out there? And I know that there is a lot of Christian science fiction out there right now, especially modern stuff that's been written just in the last few years. Just the explosion of self-publishing has allowed a lot of people to get out there with books, with ideas that they would have never been able to do when you had, uh, when it just cost a lot more to self-publish and you had to go through traditional publishers in order to get out there. But I do know that there is some older stuff. I've explored that with No Man in Eden. I've explored that with C.S. Lewis's Space Trilogy. And I've got some books lined up, some from the 90s. I got a book from the heyday of the X-Files era. And it's very clearly inspired by the X-Files era. And I've got another one by Stephen Lawhead that um, was an early novel of his. It's a science fiction novel that I'm kind of getting ready to start reading. And so I've got some things lined up. But... This episode is not going to be me asking that question and basically giving a book report and explaining why I think it's worth tracking down and reading or why I think it's not necessarily worth tracking down and reading. No, this one I'm flipping the script and I'm asking you, the viewer, to tell me, is it worth reading? I'm going to do an unboxing here. So I did one unboxing already with a book that I was just very excited to get because it was from my childhood. It was from uh, when I was in eighth grade and it was something that I'd gotten from the, the library and I remember reading it. At least I think it was eighth grade. It might have been seventh grade. I don't know. You know, things get muddled and, and all jumbled, you know, after decades go by. But what I'm going to open today is something that I am not familiar with at all. I do believe that I checked one or two of these books out in the library when I was in college, and I think I might have read at least one page out of one of those books and then ended up not finishing it for whatever reason. I don't know. But I want to flip the script, ask you the question, is it worth reading? And then I also want you to kind of, if you have an opinion, tell me what I should read. Now, I'll explain how that all makes sense in just a moment. But first, I want to kind of let you in on what I hold, I'm holding in my hands. So when we recorded our audio podcast about that hideous strength a little while ago, um, we talked about one of the main inspirations behind that hideous strength. That inspiration was Charles Williams. My co-host Steve has read almost all, if not all, of Charles Williams' novels, and he highly recommended them. He suggested that I should at least read one or two. And I've heard other people talking about Charles Williams, and C.S. Lewis himself talked about Charles Williams. So I got on Amazon and looked up Charles Williams and found what I have in this box right here. Now, who is Charles Williams? Well, Charles Williams is actually the kind of writer that I was hoping to find when I started thinking through, like, well, are there contemporary authors from the era, the time that C.S. Lewis was writing his science fiction books, which is the mid 40s, World War II around in there. And I didn't expect to find too much from that exact time period. And I did find something that was inspired by C.S. Lewis with uh, No Man in Eden. But like I said, Steve mentioned Charles Williams. We talked about a little bit about Charles Williams' influence on C.S. Lewis. C.S. Lewis loved Charles Williams, thought he was a great writer, and was a, a big fan of him. In fact, one of Charles Williams' novels that he wrote, The Place of the Lion, uh, C.S. Lewis wrote it, and, or read it rather, and when C.S. Lewis read it, he wrote a letter to Charles Williams about how much he liked it. At the same time, Charles Williams read Allegory of Love, which C.S. Lewis wrote, and wrote C.S. Lewis a letter about how much he liked. And that started a friendship that they had that lasted a very, very long time until Charles Williams' death 
in, I think it was 1945 or 19, I think it was 1945, but it was, again, that mid forties era. Because of World War II, the offices for the Oxford Review, I think it was, uh, where Charles Williams worked, were moved from London to Oxford. And because Charles Williams had to move from London to Oxford, he was able then to join his friend C.S. Lewis in his circle of friends, in the Inklings. And it was part of this circle of friends where Charles Williams actually read his last novel, All Hallows' Eve, and was able to get feedback and insight from this group of writers, including C.S. Lewis and J.R.R. Tolkien. So in my hands, I hold a box that I'm going to unbox right now. And this is a writer of contemporary fantasy, modern fantasy, or as uh, T.S. Eliot put it, supernatural thrillers. And I really thought this box was going to be easier to open. There we go. And here we go. And so I have a brick. <laughs> a giant book. But the reason it's such a big book is it actually has five novels in it. And that is why I want to ask you the question, not only is it worth reading, although if C.S. Lewis liked it, um, that just right there qualifies it as homework for me. I should have read this a long time ago. At least at least one of these books I should have read a long, long time ago. But not only is it worth reading, but if you have an opinion about which book I should be reading from this this giant brick of a book. So in here we have War in Heaven, we have Many Dimensions, The Place of the Lion, Shadows of Ecstasy, and Descent into Hell. Now I've heard about Descent into Hell. I've, I've heard about um, A War in Heaven, I think is one of his earliest ones. Um, Descent into Hell, I think some people call it one of his best novels or, if, or maybe his best novel. The Place of the Lion is that book that C.S. Lewis read. And so if you have an opinion, leave a comment or head over to strangersandaliens.com and you, know, you send us an email. If you send us an email, it would go to uh, studioavery at gmail.com. And let me know what you think. Which of these five novels should I read? Is it worth reading? And which one is worth reading? I don't know how many... Um, this is... This really is... a you know, five novels, there's 800 pages in here. So I'm probably not gonna be able to read all of them anytime soon. And I probably won't read all of them anytime in my, in my lifetime, but I'd like to read at least one, maybe two. And who knows, maybe I'll love it so much that I just wanna read them all. And then I will come back and I will do a, an is it worth reading uh, video where I do give my book report about what I think about it and, and how much I like it. And if I think it's worth, you know, checking out or if it's, if it's sci-fi homework, so to speak. Now I'm not expecting a lot of science fiction. And that's actually what I was really hoping to find is science fiction written by Christian authors from, you know, that, that, you know, middle of the century time. There's not much out there. And that's part of why C.S. Lewis wrote his books in the first place was because he and J.R.R. Tolkien were saying, uh, we want to write the novels that we want to read. And and I honestly, Charles Williams actually inspired Lewis and Tolkien uh, and helped them, you know, as far as like becoming novelists and that sort of thing. So, yeah, I'm excited to read. I'm excited to see. And I have a little bit of time before I'm going to start reading anything in here. But I did want to just pop this video out and, and just hear from you, maybe. So leave a comment below or send us a message over with strangersandaliens.com where you can leave a message through, you know, comments on the blog posts or like I said, the email address studioavery at gmail.com. So until next time, this is going to go on my shelf for a little while. I'm going to be reading some of the, um, some pulps, pulp magazines. I'm planning to do some episodes where I explore just old sci-fi not necessarily pulps, but that'll be part of it. Uh, I'd like to talk a little bit about some of what I call the ABCs of sci-fi. Your um, Asimov, your Bradbury, your uh, Clark, you know, Asimov, Bradbury, Clark, ABC. Um, but that's just a coverall for like authors that you, you should be familiar with. So until next time, I just want to say thank you so much for spending time with me. Thank you so much in advance if you have an answer for my question for letting me know. And until next time, Godspeed.